what we're going to do at this juncture is dive into InDesign and we're actually going to show you blow for blow how to make the same page layout as this top three degree show catalog of all time page layout from Loughborough. So this is the page here that we're going to replicate. Let's get started with InDesign. So first up, we go to File, New. We open up a new document and we're going to make our page width 170 millimeters. For the purposes of this template, we're going to have 100 inside pages. We're going to tick facing pages just because it is easier to design a book with facing pages on. Then you can see how the double page spreads work together. Ultimately, when we come to export, we're going to tick pages rather than spreads because that's how we need the file supplied for artwork. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to add three mil bleed and then we're going to click OK. And you'll see then that the new page opens up. So we're going to go to the pages tab over here on the right hand side and scroll down there. We can see we've got 100 pages. So the first page is always a, a loose one. That's the first right hand page when you open up your books cover. So we're going to jump to the first double page spread, which is going to be pages two and three. Obviously, you might want to add a few extra pages at the start of your book for credits for the introduction. But for the purposes of this template, we're just going to work on pages two and three. So we'll zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole page. So we're going to start by adding the email address and the contact details in the right hand corner so we grab a new text box always like to go for whole numbers when we're doing these kind of things so let's zoom in a little bit and we can get a closer view go back to the text tool let's pick a better font so we're going to go for something standard like Helvetica and we're going to choose medium. We're going to put the whole text box content in caps letters. And then we're going to change the font size to seven point so that our text fits within the box. The box is only five mil high. What we're going to do here is we're going to type in the website for that particular student. We're going to add a little bit of padding between the letters just to bulk it out. So we're going to make sure it's nice and legible. Okay, seven point looks a little bit too large, so we're going to just reduce it down to six point. And then we're going to copy that box. We're going to paste it again, and we're going to rotate the box 90 degrees. And then this is where we're going to put the student's email address. Um, so we're just nudging the measurements down, so it's uh, in a more similar position to where it was on the Loughborough one. And then we're going to justify all of the text in the box right so that no matter how long the email address is, it always ends up finishing in that same point at the top right hand corner. Nudge it down a fraction. And then we're going to retype the email address into the box. Right, again, we're going to now copy the box again. And here we're going to start adding some body text. So just to make it slightly easier, you just copy the text box we've already got. You could easily just create a new text box and start typing in there. But we'll go with the one that we've already got. So we copy and paste that. We drag out the handle in the bottom right hand corner to make this text box a lot bigger for the body text content. And then we're going to start typing some body text in. So we're going to put some text about your work that really entices people to read more, to find out a bit about your practice, your creative mindset, and ultimately spend more time on the page looking at your work.
So let's just copy and paste that paragraph a few times. Body text, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's take that up to eight point. And we can lose a couple of paragraphs here so we can neatly fit three paragraphs within that body text box. We're going to close up the padding between the letters back down to 50 so it's not quite so elongated and we're going to set it in eight point again a few different ways to do this but we're going to copy that text box we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and then this is where we're going to start adding a caption on our first image So let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit clearer and we'll start adding a caption for the image. Again, let's just tidy up the size of the actual text box itself. So we'll make it three mil high because this is going to be quite subtle caption around the uh, image itself. Then we're going to start adding a line next to that picture credit for a bit of styling. Just grounds the picture credit a little bit so it's not floating in the middle of the page. Again, let's make sure that the uh, top of the line and the top of the text start in the same position on the page for neatness. So we'll just nudge this text box up slightly. I want to make sure it's relatively spot on although we are guessing with the measurements on this we're not doing it precise to the Loughborough template but it's going to give you a flavor of how to do it um, so we just drop down a guide there uh, make sure it's spot on then we can click the guide again and press delete and the guide will disappear so now you can see we're starting to build up a good chunk of the page so we're going to get a rectangle frame tool now and this is going to be our picture box so we're going to click and drag that and it does extend across the double page spread to the right hand page. Again, we're guessing at the measurements slightly here, but you get an idea of how to do this. And we're going to go to our desktop, we're going to choose our appropriate folder and then we're going to pick an image that we'd like to bring in. So to get to that menu, just do Control D to place an image within a picture box. So that's the one we've chosen. We then go to the white arrow tool. We click the image and then we scale it from the center of the box. And if you hold shift key while you're hitting the up and down arrows there on the dimensions, it uh, drops the dimensions and the percentage down up or down by 10% at a time. Makes it slightly quicker rather than just going down in one degree increments so then we can use the white arrow tool and we can use the handles in the corner just to style it out a little bit make sure the image looks good within the constraints of the picture box let's move over now to the right hand page and we're going to copy that image and we're going to start positioning the second image on the page now this second image on the finished books it's going to go right up to the edge, right up to the top edge of the page. So for the purposes of setting it up, we need to make sure that the image goes beyond the black trim line on our InDesign page. So we need to make sure that the image goes right up to the red line. That gives us the three mil bleed that we speak about in in-depth detail on our website and on all of our contacts with you by email. That ensures that if the paper moves slightly when we come to trim and we've just got that extra three mil of your image around the top to trim into. So we'll just line up the bottom of that image box with the bottom of the text that's adjacent to it. Slide it over a little bit. Yeah, 
And then we're going to do Control D, and then we're going to choose the image that we'd like to drop into that box. We don't want both the images the same, obviously, so we're going to bring a second one in. Again, we're using the white arrow tool. So the black arrow tool moves the box itself, and the white arrow tool moves the contents of the box. So we're going to start it. We're going to resize it again from the center of the box. So we click the central one of the little nine squares on the measurements, and then we can use the white arrow tool to drag in the handles on all of the edges, and we can resize and reposition the image within the picture box. Then we're gonna go and copy the caption from our left-hand page, and we're gonna bring that over and we're gonna place that caption next to this new image. So we've copied over the, uh, we've copied over the vertical line and we've copied over the image caption. Uh, again, we're not going to be too precise for the purposes of this little showcase to make sure that the uh, caption is in exactly the same distance from the image box as it is over the page. So then we're going to now copy the second image and drop it down the page, which is going to give us scope to add a third image on our page layout template. So like we've spoken about, the Luffra page layout template is quite loose. going to do control D again and we're going to place a third image onto our page so we bring that in white arrow tool to resize the content and the handles in the corners if you hold shift while you're moving the handles then it scales them in proportion if you don't hold shift then you can kind of elongate your image slightly butcher it I guess to make sure that it fits within the box but holding shift is probably best practice and it ensures that the image isn't skewed and the proportions of the image itself remain the same. So we just use that white arrow tool just to adjust the image within the box. Then we're going to go up to the black arrow tool again and we're going to So we're going to copy this text box from the other side and we're going to bring it down and we're going to use this as our university's name in the bottom right hand corner of the page. So just for a little bit of consistency we're going to try and make sure that that box is the same distance from the top and the side of the page as it is over the leaf. So That's about 14 mil from the edge. And then we're going to change the website to your university 2020. Go back and we now we copy our body text again because we're going to have another chunk of body text here to give you scope to put four, five, six paragraphs about yourself on the double page spread. So we're going to copy the body text block we're going to bring that over to the right hand page of the double page spread. Slightly readjust it, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can fit some more text in there. And then this new text box that we've just made here is going to be for the larger student's name on the page.
So we're going to type the student's first name. And then it's obviously got to be a lot larger than six points to be legible. So we're going to go up to 18 point. And then we're really, really going to add a lot of padding into the student's name. So we're going to try 1200. What they've done on the Loughborough one is that they've made sure that the first name and the surname of the student have identical lengths. So that's quite easy to do. So we just make sure that we pad them out to the same length. So let's type the surname in there, which then you can see straight away means that the first name is a lot shorter. A little bit of text styling here. So we'll make the surname bold and we'll make the first name light just for a bit more differentiation between them. And then we're going to have to just trial and error it just to try and get the first name to the same length as the surname. That's not far off. So we're getting closer. So now we can zoom in. Let's try and get these two E's lined up. So then we can use the shift key and we can just nudge back a little bit. Yep, that's nigh on perfect. So we go with that. We're going to copy the caption over. We can copy the caption down to here, rotate it by 90 degrees. And we add the third caption to this third image down here. So we can see that the left hand edge of that image is on 238 millimeters. So we can make sure that the captions on 238 as well. We can move it up slightly so it's uh, more consistent with the position away from the image on the other two as well. Very neat. And we can uh, go up and we can save our page. InDesign does have an abort feature, I think, where if you d it does crash halfway through working on it, it will bring you back now. It's not like it was 20 years ago, where if you had done two hours worth of work and the computer crashed, you'd lost a whole lot. A bit more intuitive. So uh, what we can do then, if we save it at that point, then we can go select all. So that's command A. That selects everything that you've got on the page. We can then copy it. So control C. We can then go across to uh, pages four and five, which you can see here on the pages tab. So the next double page spread. If you then go copy and paste in place, it will then paste the content into exactly the same position on the new spread. So you can do this for all of the spreads all the way through the book. If you'd like all of the double page spreads to have the same page layout, it's an easy way to do it. You can then pass those on to the individual students or the person who's preparing the catalogue can then restyle and drop in images and drop in the relevant content for each of the students on your course.